Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is just going to be kind of a recent finds video, just sharing some stuff with you that I've picked up in the past week or two. Not a lot, actually, but uh, definitely some nice pieces to add in my collection. Um, so yeah, I just kind of jump right into it. Not not much more to say beyond that. Playing in the background, it's kind of low. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but uh, it's Feist, Let It Die. Pretty cool album by her. Uh, you know, most people, of course, I think. Oh, well, I think she she was at her highest point, if you will, when that song One, Two, Three, or whatever. You know, she had kind of her six months of fame with that, uh, which is kind of a, you know a neat little catchy song. I mean, I have the album, so it's. But uh, my favorite song by her is the song that's playing right now, actually, which is the cover of the Bee Gees' uh, Inside and Out that she did. I just think it uh, really fits her voice and her style very well, and I mean, it's a cool song in the first place. Kind of like, you know, disco-y, yet very kind of funky and groovy in places. You know, just that old Bee Gees thing. So, that's what's playing in the background. I remember I first discovered that song through an episode of Nip Tuck, actually. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Um, but yeah, let me kind of jump into it. Like I said, not a lot of stuff, but you know, the few things I got I think are kind of neat. Start off here with Tears for Fears, a song from the big chair. On a mofi pressing here, which is kind of nice. Again, just one of those classic albums that you know, especially when I start getting my 80s mood that I go back to and listen to a lot. So I thought this would be a good one to have on a very nice pressing. And uh, again, I don't have to explain this. You know, all the classics, Shout, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Head Over Heels, just a lot of great stuff. And uh, Head Over Heels too, arguably, is one of my, if not my favorite Tears for Fears song. The, um, it's not even necessarily a solo, but the... Something about the guitaring in that song is just simple yet so beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. And that's typically the song I, I default to as soon as I think about listening to any Tears for Fears is Head Over Heels. So I, again, I thought this would be a nice one to have in my collection considering. So that's one of the things I'm kind of doing with uh, my moving forward with my collecting you know, more MoFi pressings and so forth is... Um, you know, really trying to put, you know, if there's any dollars or any focus initially on the albums that I really listen to, like, you know, a lot, like the ones that I would want to have on the, you know, just to sound absolutely fantastic because they're albums I've just been spending all my life and will be spending for the next hopefully 20, 30 years. So another one that kind of goes along with that is Stevie Wonder's Talking Book. And actually, I want to get all of Stevie's stuff, at least stuff they have pressed on MoFi. I'm definitely going to be trying to get all of that because Stevie is just a, uh, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, he's a genius. I mean, that's really the only way to put it. This this guy just his, you know, to, to be so talented, but then also to have the create the creativity levels that he has is just. I mean, he's just made some of the most incredible music, and and sometimes you sit back and, and listen to it. And something I like to do with artists sometimes to, you know, maybe maybe I'm getting too deep, you know, or trying to get too deep, and not just enjoying the music for what it is or whatever. But I always try to to figure out like how they could have created that in the first place. You know, almost like kind of evaluating within myself. It's like if I were in a studio and I had this piece, is there any way I could have seen the song going this direction or seen it going the direction the artist took it? You know, and, and sometimes you can. It's very easy to listen to it and go, yes. Um, like one of the artists, I kind of make fun of that. Um, a lot of people make fun of him for other reasons, but uh, Kenny G is a perfect example. Uh, yes, I, I, I like Kenny G. I mean, it's, you know, sappy as middle of the road smooth jazz as you could possibly cheesy as you can possibly get but i love kenny the guy can play but one of the things that really initially made me like kenny g was the fact that when i first started listening to jazz you know i, I didn't know cold trains and all that stuff whatsoever it was just kind of oh here's a tape and listen to this back in college actually 
the thing I liked about Kenny is he would be playing something and then he would play these series of notes and I would start feeling it and I would just be like, oh, if he just went here and every time almost he would go there. So it was like, you know, he would go exactly where I was expecting it to go, where I felt it, it, it should go, which kind of made it simple in a way. But uh, so even though he can play so well, he does play very simple stuff until sometimes he starts to freak out in his solos and you actually realize, oh, the guy can play. But uh, anyway, I'm kind of going through the whole spiel to say one of the things about Stevie Wonder is a lot of times I'll be listening to his stuff and I'll just hear something that's so awesome and I just kind of think there's no way in a million years that I would think anybody else would think of going that direction after that phrase or after that chord change or after that whatever and that to me is what makes him the genius that he is um, I was watching Will and Grace earlier today and one of the characters on there started singing uh, the lyrics to Always and I, I thought about it this afternoon when I saw that and I was just like that song is perfection and I would, never would have thought about it like going like that so anyway that's my long blah about why Stevie is the genius that he is. And so this is my first pressing by him on Mo5. And I'm going to try to get pretty much everything they have by him out there at some point in time. Uh, third piece here, Leonard Skinner, pronounced Leonard Skinner. Of course, another classic record that never goes out of style. You know, uh, here you're talking about Tuesday's Gone and Simple Man and Free Bird. Um, you know, quite frankly, in my opinion, if they would have put uh, All I Can Do Is Write About It and uh, Sweet Home Alabama on this, this would be the absolute perfect record. I would say one of the best records ever. I mean, if those two songs would have happened to be on this album, that's saying a lot, of course, but if those two happened to be on this album, this would probably be one of my top ten albums of all time, without question. So, uh very very happy to get that so those are the three three new mofi pressings i picked up i did also as i'm going through my you know collection cleaning uh you know i'm taking stuff out selling some stuff and so forth and one of the pieces i had to pull out was my christopher cross because it was a little scratchy so i picked up a new 180 gram copy of one of my favorite soft rock albums of all time, if not my favorite. Matter of fact, I think I could arguably say it is my favorite as far as an album across the board. Um, I love Christopher Cross. And it's nice because this brand new 180 grams was only $9. So, you know, a great, great pickup. Um, but again, just a, to me, a good, perfect album. Ride Like the Wind, of course, Sailing, Minstrel Gigolo. I mean, just all kinds of great stuff on this album so I was really happy to get a, a great 180 gram copy of that and that's all for the vinyl I picked up a couple of CDs I actually kind of bumped into a, a really nice sale and got uh, most of these for two dollars or less which was nice so I got a brand new copy remaster of Kiss which is a good pickup because I'm still working on kind of completing my KISS CD studio album collection. So it's nice to get a brand new copy of that as well as trying to get the glare out of there. Sorry guys. Uh, Dress to Kill. So another great one. This is a really good one too. 99 cent pickup. A brand new copy of the El Everly Brothers Bye Bye Love. 28 tracks on there which is really cool. That was a great pickup. And then I stumbled across this one the other day. Again, for just a couple of dollars, which is nice. But Head East, Flat as a Pancake. Definitely my favorite album by them. Because, of course, my favorite song by them has never been any reason. That's, that's just a great kind of, I mean, just great up-tempo, southern rock, harmonizing. I mean, just really, really good stuff. I, I love that song. So... So there you go, VC. Like I said, not a ton of stuff. Um, um, probably come back this afternoon and do another box set video. Because uh, a majority of what I've been doing, and I know I've expressed this a number of times, has still been the focus on the box set. So there hasn't been a ton of new stuff as much as selling stuff I have to buy the exact same stuff over in box sets. That's kind of consumed my transactions, if you will. 
So uh, I'll be back again here pretty soon to maybe do another box set video because there is one really cool one that I like to share. But uh, as always, let me know what you think, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.